Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is a children's book written by Lewis Carroll during the Victorian period. As the story was created solely for the entertainment of the author's young friends, the tale of Alice's Adventure was unique during the time as a children's book which lacks the element of didacticism. However, the story does contain various themes about childhood as well as the author's comments on Victorian society. These two themes faintly encompass how the reader's main character develops her social skills to fit along with other characters from Wonderland. The story begins with Alice falling down the rabbit hole and progresses to Alice's meeting with animals, then later with other humans. Her encounters with groups of other beings can be interpreted as different social scenes that are governed by implicitly stated rules. The implicitly stated rules in these cases are equivalent to the social etiquettes that we all have to comply with in our society. From the earlier chapter where Alice confronts her first group of socializable and perhaps civilized animals, the reader can see that Alice does not start out as a perfect social creature. This is due to the fact that she cannot stop violating a rule of the small animal society that is quite rude. She constantly talks about larger animals, especially cats, in front of the other small animals. The readers can see Alice's misdoing by the end of Chapter 3, when Alice tells Lori about her cat Dinah. However, she later learns and develops her social skills from the social scene she has visited. While the Queen of Hearts croquet ground represents one of the last social events Alice has to attend, this is the first social event where Alice has shown her mastery in confronting social situations. According to Carol's story in Chapter 13, the croquet ground begins with Alice's encounter with the three gardeners, who happen to be the two, seven, and five of clubs. Apparently, these cards are painting all the white roses red because they planted the wrong color roses. Once the Queen of Hearts has arrived and examined the roses, she orders three guilty gardeners to be executed. However, Alice does not agree with the Queen of Hearts' decision, as she said to the three gardeners, you shan't be beheaded, and quickly hides all the gardeners in a flower pot nearby. After Alice sees the Queen of Hearts' power to order executions earlier, she has learned not confronting the Queen directly is an implicitly stated rule in the card society. Therefore, Alice avoids criticizing the Queen of Hearts' order to behead the three gardeners, even though she thought to herself, these people are only packs of cards on page 71 of the book. In this case, Alice's action is not based upon sudden recklessness. If Alice would have acted without thinking clearly, she would yell back again at the Queen of Hearts. Instead, Alice is acting with judgment by deciding to avoid a confrontation with the Queen. Alice's decision during this rather brief event shows how she has learned to find loopholes in society to get what she wants as she gains what she wanted by not going against the Queen directly. However, this is only a part of her overall ability to adapt to different social situations. After chapter 13 in Carol's book, in which Alice has saved the three gardeners' heads from being chopped off, she gets an opportunity to show her improved level of tolerance when she meets her old acquaintance, the Duchess. From reading chapter 14 of Carol's work, the readers learn that the Duchess was imprisoned by the Queen of Hearts because she boxed the Queen's ears earlier. She is later released to help the King of Hearts resolve his issues with the Cheshire Cat's head. When the Duchess sees Alice on the croquet ground, her personality has changed from being easily annoyed, as seen in an earlier chapter, to friendly and approachable towards Alice. However, Alice does not enjoy the Duchess's company due to the Duchess's ugliness and her sharp chin resting on Alice's shoulder. The reader should note that Alice does not act rudely by trying to reject the Duchess's amicability despite her own discomfort. Instead of trying to dismiss the Duchess's sharp chin, the best example of Alice's high level of tolerance occurs on page 80 when she's able to keep her remark on how the Duchess makes everything a present to Alice from what she says. In this case, Alice realizes that she might hurt the Duchess's feelings by saying how her presents, which are made from Alice's own words, are cheap. From Alice's encounters with the Duchess, the readers see how Carol is trying to emphasize Alice's ability to behave in front of others. Despite Alice's tolerance, it alone does not help her survive the last man standing croquet game. During the croquet game with the Queen of Hearts, Alice has shown that she was able to survive in a society using her quick shrewdness. The croquet game, which the Queen of Hearts hosts seems to Alice as a place full of chaos. Due to the fact that the mallets are flamingos, the balls are hedgehogs, and the players start without waiting for their turns. However, the menacing aspect of the game is how the Queen of Hearts sends people to be beheaded about once every minute. While Alice is talking to the Cheshire Cat, she mentions that she does not like the Queen. Despite this, Alice catches herself in mid-sentence when she realizes that the Queen of Hearts is listening behind her back. She changes the last part of her sentence, so she is praising the Queen for winning the croquet game instead. Because of Alice's quick thinking, she has averted her execution, which other croquet players seem unable to do.
Since the King of Hearts pardons every player after the game is finished, it would appear that this game is your addition. Although this means other players have more experience playing croquet with the Queen than Alice. Alice is considered to be the winner of the game, as all the other characters except the King and Queen of Hearts themselves are sent to be executed. In contrast to Carol's original work, the Walt Disney version of Alice in Wonderland does not emphasize Alice's ability to handle social situations. From the animation, the three gardeners are not saved by Alice when the Queen of Hearts has found out the roses were painted red. Although Alice tries to save the three gardeners by begging the Queen of Hearts, her attempt is unsuccessful and the three gardeners are sent to be executed. In Disney's Alice in Wonderland, not only is the Duchess not included in the story, there are also no other croquet players on the ground except for Alice and the Queen herself, which results in our inability to look at Alice's interaction with the Duchess. Nevertheless, by the end of the croquet game, the Cheshire Cat appears and proves to be troublesome to Alice. At first, the Cheshire Cat makes Alice repeat what she said by pretending to forget to materialize his ears when appearing. Alice's loud reply to the cat annoys the Queen of Hearts when she asks who Alice is talking to. However, the Cheshire Cat does not show itself to the Queen, making Alice look as if she is lying. The Cheshire Cat acts as a challenge for Alice to overcome, but Alice only falls to his trap by angering the Queen of Hearts. Therefore, the Cheshire Cat shows us that Alice cannot handle the situation well. If Disney's animation is trying to say anything about Alice's ability to blend in socially, it has an opposite impression from Carol's work. Alice looks helpless as the King of Hearts has to save her from immediate execution by proposing a trial. In Lewis Carroll's work, after the croquet game has come to an end, the readers can see how Alice has successfully confronted, adapted, and behaved accordingly during the social situation she was in. During the beginning until the end of the croquet game, Alice shows us how she uses tolerance and quick wit to win and survive the game. Her successful attempt to save the three gardeners also shows us how she has learned to bend the rules of the card society by exploiting loopholes. In addition to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland being a tale of a seven-year-old girl's adventure in a fantasy world, it also is a tale of her challenges to fit in among the people of Wonderland. By writing this story, Carol might be trying to make a claim on how challenging it is for a child to adapt and be able to conform to the society full of adults during the Victorian era. During the Victorian period, girls were expected to dwell in quiet homes amongst a few friends, to exercise a noiseless influence, to be submissive and retiring, as stated by Elizabeth Sewell, who was an influential educationist at the time. Since young girls were expected to follow a stricter set of rules than boys, Carol is trying to show how these rules might look to young girls through his concept of nonsense, which pervades throughout the entire story. In the end, the readers can conclude that the most important characteristics which Carol viewed children should develop are tolerance and shrewdness, along with an ability to make quick, critical decisions. These qualities would enable young children to blend into an adult society. 